Hello, I'm Dr. Lee, and on this episode of ELEs Explained, I'm going to be explaining the Werner shot. Since this is the first episode, I thought I'd take a few seconds to tell you what an ELE is. An ELE is an extinction level event, something that completely wipes a species, or in most cases, many species from the planet. Asteroid strikes, super volcanoes, massive plagues and famines, mega earthquakes, mega tsunamis, super hurricanes, all these things are ELEs. Now, the Werner shot in particular grew from the KT extinction, or the Cretaceous Territory extinction. This is more commonly known as the extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. Now, the problem with this extinction was that there was a massive amount of volcanic activity and a meteor strike. Now, the chances of both of those happening are quite slim, and it gets even worse when you consider there are three other extinctions which match that profile of having massive volcanic activity and a meteor strike. Scientists had to come up with a new theory, and that theory is the Werner shot. Now, the Werner shot is based around the idea of a craton. Now, a craton is a massive chunk of rock, literally continent-sized, that is impenetrable, especially to things like gas and water. Something like granite is a good example. Now, what happens is, is the Earth's core leaks some volcanic gases beneath this craton, and of course they can't escape, and they form a chamber. And over time this chamber gets bigger, and the pressure builds, and everything gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like stuffing more gunpowder into a gun. Slowly but surely you will get more and more power out of it. Eventually, some yeah, most places, this is the craton. The craton will de develop one at first and then several cracks very, very quickly. Gas begins to escape, massive amounts of pressure suddenly being released. This is a very bad thing. Because this will launch the craton into a suborbital with altitude. When it does this, all the gas beneath the craton will escape very, very quickly. Now, when it simply seeps out, say, around the sides of the craton, it can be managed. The environment can absorb it. It's fine. There will be a massive shockwave from this, both in terms of a physical shockwave, flattening a lot of stuff, and also an environmental shockwave as these poisonous gases spill out over the environment wiping out humans, plants, animals, whatever they touch. They're highly toxic. Now, now that the craton is gone and the pressure has left the rather large chamber, something's got to give again. In this case, the dirt around the sides of, the of this chamber. The chamber collapses inward, causing massive earthquakes, literally an 11 on the Richter scale. These things would flatten anything for m many, many miles. They would be felt on the opposite side of the planet. They would ripple across the Earth. It would be phenomenal. While this is happening, the gases that are released are seeping into the atmosphere. These will do very nasty things. They will block out the sun. They will poison things still. And there's an idea that they would turn the very atmosphere itself into sulfuric acid. Now, when the small dirt settles, we've got to remember the craton. Now, when the dirt settles, it settles in ridges. This is how we think that the burner shot can be found. And they have actually found proof of these big ridges that would match what would happen if all this suddenly collapsed inwards. Now, the craton is coming back to Earth. The craton, as I've said before, is a massive chunk of rock. It's coming very fast. It's going to hit like a meteor. For those that don't know, this is a lot of power, roughly the same as 7 million nuclear weapons. Imagine if you replaced every man, woman and child in London with the bomb that killed Hiroshima. And imagine all that going off at once, in one place. It's quite the struggle.
All that you'd have left is a crater, a massive crater. Some scientists think that the craters that have been believed to be an asteroid strikes could well be a craton strike. Now, how do you survive a Werner shot? You don't. You'd be you'd have to be on the other side of the planet and even then pretty much everything around you is going to get destroyed. You would have a massive ice age. It's not good. The last time something happened that was similar in scale to this was a super volcano eruption. Now that took humanity's numbers down to less than a quarter of a million. To give that a scale, that's enough to fill maybe an Olympic sized stadium. That's not a lot of people, especially when you consider we now have something like 7 billion people on this planet. Anyway, this is Dr. Lee signing off. Sleep soundly.